So I use a few slides and then I switch to the blackboard. This is just a title. And uh, before going into the mathematics, let me just uh, say some words about uh, my encounter with Jack. So the first or first encounter is of course in the... Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, well, I, I want to go quickly. So, of course, the zero state encounter was in the class of uh, topology or uh, geometry. There, I heard about his result. It was very impressive for students. And, uh, well, first real encounter in dynamics was uh, his preference with the Thurston. Probably many of you who are working on dynamics have uh, encountered in this way, and uh, the paper iterated maps on the interval have been long time preprint, and uh, well, it was a good thing to read for beginners, and uh, I was really amazed in his clear uh, way of writing and uh, the way he started. And then, finally, I, come, I had a chance to meet uh, Jack in person, and uh, I remember uh, when I met for the first time, I was saying that I was working on complex dynamics. And uh, well, I didn't really know that he was also working on complex dynamics. And then uh, we started to talk about that. And uh, he showed me the picture of a cubic connected locus for cubic polynomials, the real polynomials, and uh, he found the non-local connectivity. And also at that time, I was uh, watching the but you have a paper on uh, polynomial-like mappings, and there was a pro the technique they used, the Eckhart cylinders and Fatou coordinate. And uh, while well, I remember I was uh, trying to tell Jack that there may, this may be connected to the non-local connectivity, and this fact was actually proved later by Pierre Labos. And uh, the way, I, the reason I'm trying to say this is that uh, my talk is going in this order keeping this zero stage. And before going to the real you know, talk, I, let me say the background quickly. So I mentioned the Mimner Sasson's work on needing theory, which was already mentioned by Dennis' talk. And uh, there's a simple question that was already mentioned in the pre preprint stage, the monotonicity of entropy for quadratic family. And actually, this pre when this preprint was published, then there was a proof ready for, for the monotonicity of quadratic polynomials. But it, it, it didn't exist in the preprint version. And uh, well, there are more uh, questions about the more general family of uh, unimodal maps and a question about monotonicity. And uh, for general families, there are more counterexamples and also the partial results. I to mention the names here. And uh, just recently, maybe three years ago, uh, the Tsuji from Hokkaido University, he came up with a simpler proof of this monotonicity result for quadratic polynomials again. And uh, well, I mentioned what he did in this line. And uh, just recently, I've been working with um, Tsuji to see what happens in more general family. And, uh, my talk will, is about that. And there's another uh, direction which came from uh, Michel Lubitsch, the organizer of this conference. Uh, it was about uh, the whole space of, uh, say, quadratic-like maps. And uh, he found, or he proved the lamination structure in the space when he classified the maps by the dynamics. And there's more recent result for real analytic maps and uh, they found also the laminar structure for these real oriented unimodal maps, except near some parabolic maps, that means the maps with a parabolic fixed point, that means a neutral fixed point. And uh, so this was my direct motivation for me 
to come back again to the monopolistic question. So the, my plan is just uh, probably many of you are familiar with um, the needing theory, which was developed by Milner and Thurston, but I just a uh, few uh, words about that. Then I mentioned the monotonistic question, the simple ones are more complicated ones, and I uh, talk about the Suji's approach for quadratic polynomials and also for quadratic like maps. And there's a one invariant functional which appears in the Suji's approach. And uh, my work with Suji was concentrated on the, the, the continuity of such a functional at the parabolic mass. And uh, at the end, uh, I'd like to mention some uh, connection with uh, Lubitsch result and the Avila Lubitsch Melos result on this lamination structure in the whole space of minimodal or quadratic like mass. Okay, so my slide is over. Uh, can, can you turn on the light? <coughs> it's supposed to go on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so this talk is about uh, mainly the real map but often I assume the possibility of extension to the complex. The first place, the leading theory, you can work on the intervals or real line.
then you divide the interval into three pieces, well, half interval here, half interval here, and the critical point C, and you associate the symbol sequence, like it is in the left-hand side, right-hand side, right-hand side, and left-hand side, or uh, sometimes it could be a C itself. And uh, you get the sequence in this space, and this one is called itinerary of, of x, and the needing sequence is simply just the itinerary of, of critical value. That means uh, f of c. Then, uh, Miller and Thurston described the way you can ca uh, characterize this entropy in terms of uh, power series created from the needing sequence. And there's also an, another nice property about the needing sequence, which is the ordering. So if you have uh, two sequences like this, so let's say i1, i2, and uh, I, j1, j2, uh, from symbol space, you can define the order. So let's call I bar J bar. Then you introduce the twisted order by the following. Uh, suppose you have uh, same sequence up to n minus one. Uh, and suppose you have an uh, uh, even number of R's in this sequence, and uh, I n, uh, I n, and J n have this order, or you have an odd number of R's in the same sequence. And uh, the ordering reverse, where for each single sequence we can introduce natural order by just saying that the n is smaller than the c, which is smaller than r. Oh yeah. So and so you have to set that way, so that should be different. Okay. And what they proved, in fact, is. Uh, if two maps have this order, then topological entropy has the same order. It's possible that the, uh, the different leading sequence gives rise you uh, the same entropy, but uh, otherwise it's more or less monotone. And then, <coughs> if you do the numerical experiment, it seems that if you move the parameter, it could vary monotone, monotonically. So when you have a family of unimodal maps, then the question is, how does this entropy or the needing sequence, this is better invariant, so we've got the needing sequence. Uh, value. And the question is whether this is monotone or it may fluctuate but it may be finite times. And uh, the more specific question is, for example, if you take uh, as FT, you take the quadratic polynomial. So take the family like this. Uh, sorry about taking this family when you try to complexify usually want to take this kind of family but uh, just uh, trying to follow the tradition in real one dimension so I have this minus x so that graph looks like this so I have a parameter here and other than that it's just a quadratic polynomial and any quadratic polynomial is conjugate to this form so it's a natural family to consider so the question is 
uh, is leading sequence And this was one question which was mentioned in the Milner Sosson's uh, preprint, and uh, it was proved in uh, the published version. Actually, for the proof, there are many people who are involved in the Sosson uh, in Sullivan. And I think there are many ways to prove this now. But uh, I'm going to mention a few of them. Okay. And of course, uh, you can generalize this question. For example, if you take a fixed map F and you just translate the fixed map by T, or this. And so you have a one graph, and you just move and try to see if this is monotone. <coughs> and as far as I know, this question is in general uh, open, unless you assume that this is like that x squared or x to the 4, or even 4 of x. And other family is very difficult to prove for general cases. For example, uh, the nat well, natural setting you want to work with is uh, suppose that uh, this has a negative superset and derivative and it's uh, concave or convex. It depends on which way you want to take. And say to require you need uh, C3 or more differentiability. And uh, you can ask a question for this kind of function f. And I think this is open. Okay. So <coughs> it's it's even open for f like uh, x to the power three. For this case is done, but uh, for all the powers it's open. And. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is not a solution to this, but uh, some uh, work in the direction of this result. And actually, if you don't assume this, there is a, a counterexample due to uh, Nusse and York. So it may be a very delicate problem. And also, there's a work by Liu on the quadratic life maps, so so there you can assume that they have, it has a complex extension so that the, it extends to the mapping of degree two. Proper mapping of degree two with only one critical point in here from a simply connected domain to the larger uh, simply connected domain and. The, he classified the space of quadratic like maps in terms of the dynamics on the, uh, the Julia set. And what he found was, if you say that this is uh, the space of these maps, he found laminar structure. So along each leaf, you have the same dynamics on the Julia set. And uh, these things are. Uh, Collected in a nice way. On the other hand, if you don't assume the complete complex extension, so the nice region like this, um, there's another result. Uh, they worked on the space of uh, real analytic. So in this category, you can't assume that uh, some region is mapped properly onto the bigger region. You just have an extension in the neighborhood of the, the interval. Then they also find the laminar structure 
but except Fermion structure by the dynamics, the same dynamics, except at the maps with the parabolic system or periodic form. That means the parabolic point means just uh, some iterate comes back to itself and the derivative has absolute value equal to one. In the real situation, in the complex you have to say that this is the root of unity. Okay? So it may be possible that uh, you have some leaf with the parabolic ones. Then there are leaves accumulating here, and it's possible that if you just take uh, any one, one parameter family, which will be the curve in this space, it may intersect many times. That means if you draw the graph of family and the needing sequence, since it has the ordering, I just draw like a line, and with a parameter, it may happen that uh, it oscillates many times around the Parabolic point. So it may be possible that there is an infinite oscillation, and this is an open question. So why this parabolic period points do the bad thing to this theory? And this is motivation of my uh, question today. So before going to this part, let me briefly say how you could prove traditional, in a traditional way the monotonicity theorem. So the theorem which is proved by these people. Uh, we got the leading sequence of QT, which means it's Quadratic, the family of quadratic polynomial is monotone with respect to parameter t. And there's a background in the middle of Sasson theory, but let me skip and cut it short. Then the main part is first you show the rigidity, which means that uh, suppose you have a two parameters. And for both the critical point, the critical point is zero for this map, and zero is periodic with the same period. And suppose that the ordering of the period, this periodic point is the same. So zero goes somewhere and goes there and come back, then the same for the other map. And this is equivalent to say that the leading sequence the same. Then, in fact, prove that the, actually these parameters are the same. Just assume that these are periodic and the order is the same, and conclude that they are completely equal. So, this means uh, combinatorial equivalence implies already a conformal equivalence. Well, I stayed in within this family, so the conclusion was that the parameters are the same. So, but if you stay within the space of all quadratic polynomials, uh, the equivalence you get is the conformal equivalence. So they are conjugated by Mabius transformation. So this was a crucial part in the theorem. Then you can get the final monotonicity using the intermediate value theorem was already in minimum sources. So. That means, again, I draw the graph of the leading sequence. And suppose it's not monotone, maybe 
go somewhere like this. Then you can show very easily from the definition that the needing sequence corresponds to these periodic uh, ones. So the needing sequence for uh, ones with a critical point of zero is periodic, is dense within the possible needing sequence, within the space of possible needing sequence. Not all the sequence of LSE are, are allowed, but there's a special class which are allowed, and this point is dense in terms of the topology defined by this order. So that means if you have non-monotone function, you must uh, intersect with this level, and that means you have to have a two parameters, two parameters where for both of them the critical point zero is periodic and the same needing sequence, but by the first argument this is not allowed. So this is not allowed. That means this situation cannot occur. So from these two you get uh, the monotonicity. And why can you prove the theorem of rigidity? So there is a one way uh, which uses iteration in the time field state. Conformal structure here, 
and just lifting this control structure upstairs. So we are lifting of conformal structure by the map QT or QT prime five. Here you just need uh, the topological information of this covering. So it doesn't matter which map you take. Then <coughs> this is contraction in the sense that the contracts the time mirror distance and uh, you can check this condition by looking at the cotangent space. Of time mirror space, which is the space of polymorphic integrable uh, holomorphic quadratic differentials. That means uh, locally you can write down like a QZ EZ squared tensor uh, form and then you can integrate this. And this is finite. That means uh, on the sphere minus finite point. Actually this uh, excluded points can be all of this uh, coefficient function and actually the order must be at most one. The order will fall is at most one. And then, what's the cotangent map of Hauser? Uh, so, T star on the cotangent space. This is nothing but the push forward. on the quadratic differential. That means, uh, then let me call this R because this is important. Uh, so if, if you have a quadratic differential P like this, then you take the sum of all inverse images, and W, divided by the derivative. Okay. And if you take the absolute value and define the same thing that with the absolute value downstairs, then it's easy to say, see that this is this norm equal to 1 with this norm. So the operator norm is 1, but uh, for general case, you can easily show that uh, this norm, uh, I should say, the norm of the absolute value is 1, but if you don't take the absolute value, it is strictly less than 1, except in the very special cases. And this gives you the contraction result. Okay? <coughs> and for the crucial part is the proof of the rigidity. Then there was a, a new proof, uh, the Masato Tsuji, which was kind of easier approach. You don't need to refer to the uh, the time mirror space or quasi conformal mapping. You just manipulate with some matrix and some differential. So let's go back to the original question, the monotonicity. So what you want to prove is whenever you meet, whenever the graph of needing sequence meets, the periodic locus, where this, uh, the critical point, say uh, zero is always supposed to be a critical point. So this is the, the point where uh, the critical point constructs itself. And whenever you meet this kind of locus, in the parameter family, then what you want to know is that you want to cross in a positive side. So whenever you cross this periodic point, uh, periodic parameter, then you're going to the positive direction, and 
because of the density of these kind of parameters, uh, the, the leading sequences, we can be sure that uh, you always go in the right direction. You're saying you don't see the right Yeah. Yeah. Time derivative. Uh, yeah, time derivative. Well, you cannot really define the time derivative in the space of sequence. Right. So anyway, what did he prove was the following. Uh, so whenever you have a parameter t, so that critical point comes back to itself. Okay, and uh, let's take n to be the smallest one for this parameter t. And if you can show that this ratio is positive, so let's call this star, then this family is monotone. So this is what I was framing, because if you remember the definition of leading sequence and the ordering, uh, you twisted the ordering by the number of hours coming into the leading sequence. The number of hours is just the number of times you go through the part where the derivative is negative, so switching the order. So you look at the number of times you switch the order and uh, just uh, take the, the ratio or the, take the sign of this ratio with the parameter derivative where this means at t equals t0, at t equals uh, this parameter, then you are coming back to the origin. And as you move the parameter, you may go to the right or left. And if they go to the right direction, you should be moving Okay. So it's a simple question whether you want. <laughs> this is a simple statement you want to prove. Okay. And uh, for general family, it's not easy to check. But uh, if you have this family, first of all, the, the derivative, t derivative is constant, so one, and uh, this star comes out to be just uh, this kind of sum, q to the i at the critical value. So you want to check the sign of this one. Okay. So then he comes up with a space of, uh, say, comes up with a space V, which is the sum, the vector space, which is just a sum. C, right, chi, uh, qi, zero, where i. One to the minus one, where chi is chi of x is just a quadratic differential of the form v minus x e z squared. At this stage, in general, this, the element in here is not the integral, but just don't worry about it now. Okay. Then you define the push forward operator uh, B itself with the same definition here. And then the matrix form, say, start with I minus R. So quickly, it has uh, the expressive uh, form, like this. Anyway, it's easy to check what kind of uh, formula it has. You just write down the action of R on this space, where the base is sent. And uh, the uh, proportion used is that uh, this is equivalent to the determinant of I minus R. Okay. So you want to check the sign. And if you have taught, if you have ever taught uh, linear algebra course, 
there are kind of exercise that if, if you have a real matrix which is contracting or all eigenvalues are less than one in modulus, then this kind of determinant is positive. So I'm not going to prove it. So maybe you can, your student can. So there's an easy consequence from the fact that the R is contracting. But to be able to show the contraction, you have to work a little bit because uh, I cannot use the same norm as the previous one because uh, in general the element here not has, does not have a finite norm, but you can restrict yourself to some region and it's not to the bigger region, and then you can integrate P only in this region U, and it's easy to show that the uh, operator norm of R is strictly less than 1, as a conclusion, this is positive, and that proves the monotonicity. So, well, you don't even need the uh, quadratic differential, you just uh, define the formula for this vector space and the uh, action of R, and you get the monotonicity. Yeah. Right. That's, uh, you don't even need to know it, just uh, by formula you can check it. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, from this writing, yeah, right, right. Oh. Just to look at the total integration of the function and the triangle inequality. So this was nice, but uh, doesn't seem to have a generalization in a larger class. That's unfortunate. And uh, the question is, uh, justify this fact uh, maybe without using calculation of this. So this determinant is only related through this calculation of this explicit determinant and uh, the writing in terms of the basis. But this should be more intu intrinsic way of saying this, that uh, so far we haven't found a better way of saying this. So natural generalization you can look at is the quadratic like map, and I restrict myself to the case of real ones. So suppose you have a symmetric, simply connected region and the mapping F, which sends the smaller one to the bigger one, uh, and the mapping is proper and degree 2. Such a map is called a quadratic like map. A quadratic like map. Before I had a quadratic polynomial, and now I have a quadratic like map. And uh, try to do the same thing, but unfortunately, the corresponding space should be uh, infinite dimensional. So probably you can take the same factor, but you also have to take the holomorphic ones, which are integral. <coughs> and uh, it's more unfortunate that if you look at the action of R, <laughs> and try to, or I only wrote I minus R, it can have form for the form, the, the differential with the simple poles and the holomorphic part, I present by this uh, the, the singular part and this the holomorphic part, then it more or less has the same form as before, and uh, some uh, but unfortunately this is not a triangular matrix, you have some term coming from holomorphic part. So it's not straightforward to say that the determinant of this is something like the determinant of this times the determinant of that. That would be uh, nice to prove that the same result, but un unfortunately I have this term, so you cannot 
uh, say that this is determinant A times determinant D. So it's not equal. But uh, maybe what you want to say is um, the sign may be the same. But I, we haven't succeeded in this direction. Okay? So the next thing what uh, Suji did was try to see what can what he can do for quadratic drag maps, just changing the starting point. Uh, so, uh, so, when you have a parameter family, then you can find the vector field, or vector field at the value, like this. So this is the way uh, the family is changed. And then you introduce the, big, the real vector field by dx divided by the, the derivative. And uh, I'm going to fix one parameter, so uh, I will omit the parameter c. So this describes how you are trying to deform the function f. Okay? Then look at the, this kind of functional f uh, b. Uh, where f is a unimodal map and uh, v is uh, the this, uh, deformation vector. And uh, c, I'm assuming that f is a quadratic like, so it goes like this, and uh, take the quadratic differential, holomorphic quadratic differential. Defined on the space uh, the set U. And then try this quantity, Xn, or M, Xn, uh, is defined to be the interval around U, or a little bit inside. Uh, there is R M phi M P tilde and uh, it's a line integral around the boundary of U. Okay? And uh, in a group situation, actually there is an uh, easy calculation which gives you that uh, uh, this is equal to I equals zero to N minus Y. Uh, 
and if you can find that in some direction uh, you have a positive sign, for example, then you can determine this sign and this sign, and then you move the parameter. So again, you plug in the FT and the key for B and T, or you can also put the T also, but the key being T, then they may, may have a, the same sign in the neighborhood. Then, at least this will prove that uh, the direction of moving a leading sequence is uh, the constant. Well, we cannot say that uh, this is monotone, but uh, maybe it's a kind of uh, locally monotone and a good situation. So when can you prove the continuity? And uh, there's an easy estimate coming from uh, this expression that uh, you replace the integral around the boundary by an integral around the neighborhood of the boundary. So that becomes an angulus and uh, becomes an area integral. So the easy consequence was, for example, some estimate like this infinity times the tilde infinity norm of A only on the annulus and it's not singular there and the uh, area of F minus M of A is annulus so at least it can show that uh, if uh, the area of the field in Julia set uh, is continuous at the parameter t equals t naught, then x f t t t is also continuous. Then, then there will be a big problem if the area if it's continuous. And that typically happens when you have a parabolic fixed point. So when you have a, a fixed point or a periodic point like this, with a derivative uh, the absolute value of derivative 1, what happens in a complex plane that you have a uh, basin of attraction for this parabolic periodic point, also, and the inverse image also. And as soon as you perturb this map and uh, changing this parameter, it could happen that uh, you may have uh, more part in the Julia set, and also the complement of the Philippine Julia set comes into this. Region. So, in this situation, there's always a discontinuous change of the area of field in Julia set K or T. Okay. And uh, so, at this point, it just looks like a hopeless to prove the continuity of this quantity, X. But in fact, what we can say is that uh, uh, the proposition uh, X is continuous at the parabolic parameter. Even though uh, the naive estimate like this doesn't work, you can actually show this. And uh, in fact, this it is related to what I told at the beginning. You want to use what's called the uh, tattoo coordinate and the echo city. So let me brief about this. Whenever you have this periodic point with derivative 1, 
you can find attracting direction and repelling direction on the other line. So in one direction, it's attracting, and one, another direction is repelling. So then you draw a region like this, a curve like that, which we map to the other curve like this. And the orbit coming in will pass only once. And from here, you can construct a mapping to the complex plane so that at least this region in the basin of attraction, it conjugates the map to the map B goes to D plus 1. And this map is called the tattoo coordinate. Okay. And what I, we wanted was to estimate the variation of X. And the estimate of X involves the kind of estimate on this kind of time. Okay. And uh, the bad point of this was that uh, uh, since this region varies and the area varies, the integral may not uh, change continuously. But in fact, what you can say is that uh, when you have this quadratic differential key, this region, and you strip the key to this parabolic basin, and uh, then push forward this phi to phi, like the, the way I defined for defined R, then you can go on to the cylinder just to take in the quotient by phi, by the action of this translation, then it goes to the cylinder. But uh, since when you define this one, there's a critical point, and the, its image gives rise you are whole <coughs> of all of this quadratic differential, and it gives you one pole MOS at the one point on the cylinder. Okay? So we started with the integral of a quadratic differential, and we make a push forward, P bar, P, then I go to this cylinder with possibly one other pole. But in fact, this is here with three marked points, and it's integrable, but uh, this cannot happen. So for quadratic differential to be integral, integrable, you need a four poles. So this one should vanish completely. Okay. So as soon as this, you integrate this over parabolic basis, this will be equal to zero. Well, you have to change the limit and other things, but basically this is the idea. So as soon as you push forward up to here, it vanishes so it doesn't affect on the variation of this function. So this is one thing we worked on. And uh, let me mention a little bit about the connection with the uh, image. Avila, uh, uh, mirror image. And, uh, so it's very inter interesting that uh, if you stay with the quadratic right mapping, there's always laminated structures. And if you stay on the real line and just take a real analytic mapping, it may be possible that uh, you have a violation of laminated structure. So what was the difference between here? Okay. Then you can also analyze the bifurcation along the parabolic map. So when you have this derivative, the periodic point with derivative one, you change the little bit. So what's happening is, we well just take the suitable interest for the uh, periodic point you can fix. Then before perturbation, you have an orbit coming in and it stay there forever. But on the other side, you have the orbit going out. Okay? And the basin will fall in form like this. But as soon as you perturb this map into certain direction, they bifurcate, and it's possible for this orbit to go through. And it looks like this. So there's a new global orbit coming out. And uh, you can analyze this procedure using a theory developed by Duarte Hubbard and the host. Uh, so before, Perturbation, there's the orbit 
and this orbit may eventually come in back in here. So you may see the small inverse image of these parabolic basins. The after that, you may have a remaining of that, but also there's a new orbit. So you can take two separate Hatu coordinates for this side and that side that defines the, well, this kind of cylinder picture, taking a quotient by translation. But in after perturbation of this type, you have a mapping, a whole mapping from this cylinder to that one. And uh, this picture, you may have the remaining of inverse image of parallel ones. Then as soon as you perturb, this orbit may come in back in here and continue to iterate. So what you can say is that uh, from this picture, you can define the new real mapping of this form. Let me just draw a graph. It's not defined everywhere, but uh, in the climbing and it has a single, single critical value and it extends periodically and try to iterate this type of map. <laughs> and uh, actually the perturbation of FT imitates the bifurcation of GT equals T plus G naught. So you, def you, you are able to define some kind of map of this class from this data. Then the perturbation will have this kind of situation. And actually, if you have a, par a perturbation parameter epsilon, this will look like a G, G a square root of epsilon, one over square root of epsilon. And uh, what you can say is that uh, if this family is not a monotone in suitable sense, then there is an infinite oscillation. Leading sequence of FT for original family. So one violation of mono, uh, uh, monotoneness for this one will give rise to the infinite oscillation for this one. But in general, <coughs> so we were not able to find any monotone family because, uh, as I said at the beginning, this kind of monotoneness question is very difficult, seems to be very difficult, so we don't know example, but uh, what you can say is that uh, if GT has a nice covering properties, covering from cylinder to cylinder with only one critical value, then GT is monotone. So you cannot create a counterexample. Yeah, you have to define the leading sequence adopted to this kind of family. And uh, so what you can conclude that is that if you have a real mapping, real analytic mapping, may be possible that you cannot really define the whole basin of attraction because try to define the parabolic basin you may go out of the domain of definition. But if you happen to have a periodic orbit so that uh, this kind of basin is well defined within the domain of definition and suppose this mapping is 2 to 1 in this region, then you can do this construction so this claim will apply. So you are not able to construct the context now. And, uh, well, I don't know if we want to construct a counter example or prove the monotonous, but at this point, this is what uh, we can say. Thank you very much.
So uh, just to take a real map, and suppose that small derivative is negative and concave, and try to see the monotonicity of this kind of sound. For example, one. Uh, yes, so to derive this hypothesis, uh, I needed that uh, it's defined in some neighborhood of the real line, and then there's a well defined domain near this parabolic point, and this domain is relatively compact in the domain of definition. And the mapping is two to one inside. Uh, yes, uh, well, I have, I have. Unfortunately, I cannot say the monotonicity of the original family. But I'm saying that you can also construct the counterexample this way when this uh, condition is satisfied. So first, I thought that uh, you, may, you might be able to construct. Example of infinite oscillation. If you can, if we are able to find G such that uh, this smooth uh, anti-monotonic, uh, that uh, has not been successful. And uh, under this situation, you cannot do it. Yes. Uh, there are several results. Uh, for Schwarzian derivative, I'm not completely sure, but if you. Uh, is another example or no smooth? How smooth was that example? I thought that, that was not uh, so smooth. Thank <laughs> you. 